Praise the Lord. Well, it's another Thursday, another time for a Bible study. Let's, you and I, join in together tonight and let's delve into the Word of God and see what the Lord would say to us. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege, the outright wonderful privilege of studying your Word. Illuminate our hearts and our minds. Strengthen us as we delve into your powerful word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I want to take a text tonight from 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse number 6. 1 Samuel 30 and verse number 6. David is in a time of distress. He uh, is running from Saul. He has been anointed king. And some 12 years have elapsed, and he's still not in the kingdom, still hasn't taken the rulership, and he's running for his life. Saul has been a sworn enemy and has done everything in his power to destroy David because of jealousy. And then there's this situation that came up with the Amalekites where they ran off with David's people, him and his fighting soldiers, all their families, all their livestock, and uh, it tells the story in the first six verses of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. But I just love verse 6. It says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. The King James says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know, it's strange how God can give you messages and uh, from the most unlikely sources. I don't know if it's because you're called to preach or you're just walking with God every day and you're looking at the spiritual side of life. But my wife and I recently were in a restaurant and we had had lunch and and they had a dessert bar there. And I go over to where the dessert bar is and they have a ice cream machine. And uh, above it, it says, help yourself. Help yourself. And I, I saw that and I started thinking about that and I realized the dessert, the cone would be free and the ice cream would be free. And they were encouraging you. They're, they're saying, we're not going to serve it to you. We're not going to make it up. We're going to wait for you to help yourself. And then it seems like as I sat down eating my ice cream cone, that the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, that's the way my kingdom works. He said, so many of my people suffer and do without and do and go with lack, not because I'm not there, because I am there. You know, the machine was there. All you had to do was help yourself and you could have it. But there's so many of God's people that don't help themselves. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have help. We have solace from the Holy Spirit. We have encouragement. We have angels that hover over us, commissioned by God to watch his people. We have all kinds of spiritual help. We have the solace and the comfort of the Word of God. We have so many things, areas that minister to God's people that can make us victorious, can give us peace and make us overcomers. But are you availing yourself of that? It's nobody's fault if I'd have gone to that restaurant and said, boy, I sure would like an ice cream cone. I don't know why they can't serve me an ice cream cone. I wonder how much I'd have to pay to get an ice cream cone. Why are they so dilatorious here in this restaurant to not take care of me and my needs? No, silly. Get up and get it yourself. 
And the same is true for so many things spiritually in the kingdom of God. This is exactly what David did in his approach to God. When he found his people, his soldiers, losing their families and their children were on the verge of, of killing him over their grief. And the situation looked hopeless and lost. And David was helpless in so many ways. Yes, he was. His families were gone. What did he do? He encouraged himself. He strengthened himself. Without a church, without a pastor, without the Holy Spirit, without a written word. You know, we, we have so many avenues of success today. It's incredible. We have Bibles on our phones and our iPads and our computers. We have so much access. David didn't have any of that, but he still had a will to serve God. And he still knew how to be victorious. And uh, he helped himself. He encouraged himself. He strengthened himself in the Lord. And I think many times God allows circumstances to happen to us that really push on us and push our buttons and slap us in the face and jab us. And I think God is wanting to see if we'll use that as an impetus to turn around and say, no, I'm going to serve the Lord. God's got a job for me. My job is not finished. My children will be saved. My house will become a house of order. God will restore. That's what God's looking for. That's called faith. That's what David exhibited. He exhibited faith in God. And what did he do? He got the priest to bring the Urim and the Thummim and they asked the Lord. He asked the Lord, shall I proceed? And the white stone means yes. The black stone means no. They, they pulled it out. It was white. So the Lord said, go and you will conquer. You will get all. You will gain all. And they did. And they went and they found this army that had taken everyone hostage and they destroyed them and got everything back they recovered all, it says. They recovered all. If you help yourself, you will recover all. If we would spend as much time encouraging ourselves as we do discouraging ourselves. I thought of that. How many, our natural thinking processes are negative. They're in a downward spiral. They're not positive. People are not born positive. They're born negative. We don't see the glass half full, we see it half empty. Just naturalistic thinking of humans. And even more, as we're seeing so many pressures exerted on society, people have never been more negative and downcast and overwhelmed. But we have to, as God's people, seize the initiative and wake up to the promises of God. And put those promises in your mouth and take the initiative. You know, the Lord's been dealing with me. He said, when you wake up in the morning, immediately seize the day. Seize the day. Get up and take the initiative. In other words, take the battle to the devil. Before the devil gets a chance to discourage you, you encourage you. Before the devil gets a chance to say something negative, get up and say something positive. If nothing else... You're one day closer to heaven. If nothing else, if nothing else in your world has changed, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You've got every reason to rejoice and to take the positive track. Hallelujah. And I wrote this down. The Lord gave this to me regarding this lesson. If you will take care of the spiritual in your life, God will take care of the physical. It's the spiritual or the physical. The spiritual against the physical. And most of us spend 90% of our time taking care of the physical. Well, I have to go to the cleaners. I have to go to the work. I have to pick up the kids. I have to do this. That's okay. God knows we have the physical chores, the physical side of our life. But those aren't the things that determine our peace, our victory, our overall mental health. The things that really matter are the spiritual. And if you will take the initiative... And see this as your job, number one job of your life. Wake up every morning with a spiritual mind. Wake up every morning with the praise of God in your mouth. Wake up every morning with a song in your heart. Wake up every morning, seize the initiative and begin to praise God, worship God. And quote scripture, read scripture. Begin to just talk to God. 
Seize the initiative. You'll be amazed how much you have helped yourself by taking the initiative in the spiritual realm, and then that bleeds out. It just bleeds out right into the physical. Everything goes better in your interpersonal relationships, your, your relationship with your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, all of that. It just flows with peace because it's coming from the spiritual. The spiritual is being taken care of. So the physical has no place to go except but we try to do it in the opposite. We, we're, we're physical most of the time. And then once a week, we try to go to church and be spiritual. No, we need it every day, every moment. Hallelujah. I pray God, help us to help ourselves. We have the victory. We are overcomers. We can win. We will win if we'll hold his hand. But we still have our job to do. God won't do for you what you can only do. I pray, God, that you will just help us. There's some people that's watching this that need this. The devil's been oppressing their mind, and oppressing their spirits, and they've been negative, and they've been fearful and downcast. And God verging right on, on depression I rebuke that spirit, that demon that's come against their mind. You will not win in the name of Jesus. We belong to the Lord. His mark of the blood is over our lives. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We are the head and not the tail above and not beneath. And we take authority. We take that which Jesus apprehended for us in the powerful name that's above every name. Give us that peace and that victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, nobody can do it for you. The responsibility is on your shoulders. Do what you can do, and God will do what you can't do. Amen. God bless you today.